Facebook, hello, good afternoon. It's midday, midday mastery with me, Steve Woody, and today we're going to be talking about opt ins. So, the reason that I've started doing this series on Facebook Live is I know that a lot of you are watching this, um, you're looking at ways that you can increase um, your business in terms of bringing more people into your business and then converting those people into customers. And so, Last week, and you can go back through any of the other videos, we talked about a lot of the other things around sort of getting started in business. But this week, I specifically want to focus this week on what you can do to attract people into your business and how you can convert them into customers. So specifically, what I'm going to be doing is focusing on what's called the customer journey. Um, people call it a sales funnel. People have got different names for it. You hit, like There's a real transition at the moment where people are going from... Uh, what's called like people say oh, I want a website or I want a business now people say I want a funnel and I want to I want a sales funnel and I want to put people into this funnel but the reality is that whatever you call it it's it's the customer journey it's the experience and it can be summed up really easily uh, with two words and these two words are all you need to know if you if you if you know nothing else then you just need these two words Rhett, hello good to see you my friend and these two words that that from no matter what you do, or what's next. That's it. That's all you need to know. Like the whole purpose of your business and everything that you're doing is to ask the question, what's next? So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is find out. Hey, hey, everyone, by the way, jumping on. Nice to see you on here. Say hi. Let me know whereabouts you are. Like, tell me whereabouts you are in the world. I'm curious because I know I've got people from all over and uh, I'm, I'm really curious where you guys are all from. So let me know. Let me know where, you, let, let me know where you're from in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll give some shout outs on that. So yeah, the thing you need to know, and, and this is the most important thing, and if you learn nothing else, if I can teach you nothing else, then just take away these two words, it's all that matters, what's next? So you want to attract people to your website, what's next? Then obviously you want to get them to do something, so you want to get them to maybe opt in to a list so that you can nurture them, what's next? Then obviously after you've got them into a nurture list, then you want them to uh, become a, a customer maybe. So then, okay, what's next? So do you see what I mean? By asking the question, what's next, the funnel will never actually end. It's not like they start here and they end here and there's a process. You can have that, but there should always be a next step. So what's next? You know, they bought this product, what's next? They're going to buy a different product. What's next? They're going to need this. Like the idea is how can you continuously keep helping people? Hey, Gail. Hi, Debbie. Hey, everyone. Wow, South Korea. So, um, yeah, I think you may be the furthest at the moment. Let's see who else comes on. So what I'm going to talk about today, because this is a challenge, um, and there's, there's a problem. Not a problem, but there's a challenge that a lot of people have. Uh, I'm going to show you how to overcome that challenge and different things that you can do. So in terms of what's next, the first thing, like we need to have a starting point, because you can't say what's next unless you start somewhere. So you need to have a point where you start. So the very first thing you want to do is to get someone to opt in, is you want to get their name and their email address. Right? That's, that's what you ideally want. So this is what we call an opt-in. Now, the reason we call this an opt-in is because they're opting in. They're, they've got an option to give you their information. Um, we, we sometimes call this a squeeze page. And what we mean by that is we're squeezing information out of the person. I know it sounds a little bit like, <clears throat> but... The reality is like that's just internet marketing talk. That's what people say, that we're squeezing information out of a person and it's called an opt-in. So whether it's called an opt-in or a squeeze page, whatever you call it, the idea behind this is that you're capturing the information, their name, and at least their email address. The way that this works, now, because things have changed a lot and people that wrote books about this years ago didn't necessarily have the technology that we have now. When someone opts in, the very, very first thing that you get from them is an IP address. So when someone lands on your website, you will get their IP address because everyone has an IP address. And so unless they're using some form of like spam blocker or a proxy or something to kind of thwart your attempt to capture that, you'll be able to capture their IP address so you'll know where in the world they are. You'll probably be able to find out what machine they're using uh, in terms of is it an Apple, is it a PC, what operating system are they using. Um, there's a lot of information that you can get just from an IP address. And so when you capture that, that gives you an idea when you're starting off about the information that you want from people, where you're getting it from, what you're doing. Then the next stage in this journey, because this is like a game, right? The only purpose that you want in an opt-in or for anything in your business is you want to imagine you've got this sheet of paper here and you have some basic information and then you have some more detailed information. So this is if you like a contact card. 
And all we want to do, this is the game, this is business, right? What you want to do is you want to find out who is this person. So you need to start to find some information out about this person. And the more information you find out about this person, the more you can help them. And so that's what we want to do. We want to fill in the blanks. And so the opt-in is a way to start this journey. Because you cannot create a contact card for somebody unless you have some basic details. So we can start with their IP address. But what we really need to do to create a contact card is get an email address. That's all. So we've got an IP address. But what we really need to do is get an email. At the very least. Because with an email, we can create a contact record and we can start to populate. Then we can put in what is their IP address. Um, what, now we know their email. Now, what a lot of people do, and this is the mistake that a lot of people make, is on their website, they, they will have a, a header banner here, which will be like, here's their top menu that they have with their logo, and then this will probably be, I don't know, some form of rotating banner or something that they use. And then underneath, it will say, name, email, subscribe. All right, we've all seen these. And what happens is people look at that and go, nope. Because why would you want to subscribe to something? One, you've had nothing about it. Like you're on the top of the website. You haven't even looked any of the content yet. You have no idea how good this person is, what they do, how they do it. And you're going to give them your email address so they can bombard you with emails? I don't think so. Like that doesn't work anymore. Used to. When people used to care about emails. When people used to read every single word. Now it's like the only time that you'd be clicking on that is if this was for something like unsubscribe me. Or if this was like, you know, unroll me or something and a way to get out of emails. No one wants more emails. And we're transitioning now from emails into push notifications. So push notifications have a much, much higher engagement. Which is why if you have the ability to create an app or to get onto the mobile platform. And even on, on, on desktop browsers now, you know, you've got push crew. Um, you, can, you can go on and you can get desktop notifications that get sent straight to your browser now. Yeah, they're annoying, they're a gimmick. Yeah, people aren't going to, you know, going to pay for them and people are going to charge more than it's worth at the moment. But it's another way. It's another way of engagement. So you need to ask yourself, what's going to work for you? Emails do work, but you need to be careful how you collect it. This form of an opt-in, subscribe to my newsletter. No one wants a newsletter anymore. Not unless they've already bought into you. And at that point, they're probably on the blog. And they've probably already read an article and you want that at the bottom of your blog article. Not on your homepage underneath your top banner. Or not something that pops down before your page even loads. Like Sumo Me when they pop that big screen down and says, get this. Really? You really think that? Like, the, Check the metrics. Check the conversions. See how many people you're getting opting into for this and this. I can tell you now, it's not going to be as many as you want. So, this is the idea. What we want to do is we want to get the name and the email address. Uh, the, the email address. And then ideally, we want to get the name. First name would be good to start with, because then you can start to personalise your messages, then you can start to talk to people. Oh, hi Steve, I noticed that you visited this website, I noticed that you did this. And so what you really want to do at this point is start to build up this list. What are their problems? How many times have they visited the website? When, you're, uh, you're, when you're, your um, information is linked to the website and it's talking to each other, then you can say they visited three weeks ago, they visited this page, they were interested in this, they opened this email, they clicked on this. So what you start to do is build up a history with that person. And I use Active Campaign at the moment. Uh, I've just moved over from Infusionsoft. And in using Active Campaign, there's a, on the side, it tells me every single interaction I've had with that person, be it a note, an email, them on the website, um, as they go through my deal process. So as, as we move them from like they've read this chapter of the book, now they've read this chapter of the book, now they're here, now they're here, now they're here. I can see exactly where they are so I can nurture them through that process. And it's taken me weeks to set all that up. Literally taken me weeks to set it all up. Like, because I've had to reset it all up away from Infusionsoft. So the more information that you can gather, the better you can have. Like everybody I email in my uh, CRM system, in, in Active Campaign, I personally email them. I don't send out automatic broadcasts anymore. I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, you're here, let's have a chat. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Active Campaign now. I really enjoy it. Um, why Active Campaign compared to Infusionsoft or ClickFunnels? That's a great question. So ClickFunnels, um, like they, everyone's just come back from Final Hacker Live. Russell Brunson's uh, put his event on, and I know everyone's been raving about it. It's been amazing. The thing with ClickFunnels, and I'll say this, is ClickFunnels is no different to Wix, Squarespace, Weebly. You know, you're relying on someone else's platform, and when that goes down, your business goes down. 
And I'm sorry, but I don't want to put my business in the hands of someone else like that. I feel like your website, you should be in control of it. It's why I like people to have it on WordPress. It's why I like them to have it on a server. Because if the server goes down, you can move it to a different server. You can put redundancies and fail safes. If ClickFunnels has a problem, which they do, they do have problems, then you're, you're kind of stuck on that platform. Plus, it's clunky and buggy, and there's not that much you can do on it, really. You start doing membership sites, and you start putting courses in and things like that. The, I don't want to get into a geeky mode, but you look at like the serialization of data and you look at the database and how it processes the information, it's not what it's meant for. ClickFunnels is great for a landing page. ClickFunnels is great to, I always recommend, use ClickFunnels to build out a funnel, to build it out, to test it, to make sure it works, to get it going, minimum viable product, proof of concept, get your funnel out there, see if work, things are working and then build it in your website once you know it works. ClickFunnels is great for that, lead pages, things like that. Um, when you were saying before, what about Infusionsoft? Infusionsoft's great. I love Infusionsoft. Still got a lot of clients on Infusionsoft. I'm just, like, personally for me, I'm a very visual person. I like to see things. And the challenge I've got with um, Infusionsoft is it's very data-centric and it's very Excel sort of orientated graphs and lists. And even one of their extensions, Graphly, uh, which I was paying an extra, like, $50, $60 a month for, it was great. It gave me some extra things, but it didn't quite give me what I needed. So active campaigns very visual, it's very easy. It just it's simple. I just go in, click, 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 I'm done. It's just I, I don't have to mess about. And now, especially as I'm like working with a few people and I want to make sure I can, you know, track the progress of these people, it just makes life so much easier. I can put notes in the system, I can start to build out this information and I can start to and I'll show you it in a minute. Um, I'm gonna need to check the battery on the phone because it's gonna die in a minute. I don't know what's going on at the moment, but Facebook Lives are draining my battery and my lead. That's as far as it reaches. So I can't quite get it to the phone. So in a minute, I'll um, I'll move this in a minute and I'll, I'll show you the screen and everything. But for now, I just want you to sort of have a look at this. So the idea behind this is that you need to look at how you're going to get people to opt in. Because like the process that we want to look at and what we want to do, let me just uh, wipe this off. Never used this before. Got a new little toy to play with. Um, but the idea here is that when we look at a funnel, and I'm going to use this as an example, this top level here, what we call the opt-in, you really want to put as many people into this process as you possibly can. You want to have a huge wide net, and you want to capture as many people as you can. Now, the whole purpose of this, people think the purpose of this is to make money. That's a result of this, but that's not the purpose. The purpose of this is this is a sieve. These different layers here, it's a sieve. You're filtering. So what you do is you put in all of the crap, and I mean that respectfully, prospects. Let's call them prospects, it's a better word. We don't want to say crap. But you put in everyone, everything, into here, and you get them onto your list. That's the first step. The first thing is to get as many people on your list as you can. Step two here is to remove them. So the first thing to do is get them onto your list. The second thing to do is to remove them. Because what you want to do is you want to qualify the people that are going to purchase from you as being people that you want to work with, who you want. You don't just want everybody, right? You want to, you want to filter. And so the first thing you want to do is capture as many people as you can, find out if they're interested. Some aren't going to be interested. That's great. Let them go. Don't get hooked up on the fact that you need to build a big database. You don't need a big database. You need a quality database, a quality list. Okay, quality is much better than quantity, and so we bring in the numbers here into the starting point, and we can have different funnels, we can have different opt-ins, and I'll talk about that in a minute. We can have all these different things where we have an opt-in here, and here, and here, and here, and a different thing, and I have. I've got cornerstone templates, you know, I have discovery calls that I do, I have different things that I do with people, um, teaching people one thing, Facebook ads, YouTube videos, all these different things that I do, all lead in to this opt-in. And then here, I have an automated process. I have an this is very important. It's an automated process where I ask a series of questions. And you can do this on my Get Started. And on those series of questions, you'll either go or you'll carry on. It's as simple as that. You're either going to leave. Great. I might retarget you in the future. I might not. I don't know. It depends. Because, as I said, I'm not after everybody. But the whole idea is that step two then, okay, what we can start to do is called KLT. They need to know, like, and trust you. And so the whole idea here is they need to get to know you. Well, they found out about you. They've opted in now. So now they know you. You need to get them to like you. Best way to get someone to like you is to help them. If you can help someone, they're going to like you, right? If you can solve a problem for them, they'll like you. 
And if they can trust you, if you can deliver, like if, if they get to know that you've, you can do something, they like the fact that you can help them, they trust you because you have helped them. Because there's a difference between someone knowing they can help you and actually helping them. Saying you can help someone and helping them, there's a difference. So when they know, like, and trust you, they'll come through into the next step. And here is when you can talk about, and we'll talk about this tomorrow when we talk about the IPO, initial product offer. This is where you offer a low ticket item, something that doesn't cost a lot of money, so that they can trust you. Because here, they get to know you. Here, they get to like you, and here is where they trust you. So this is a filtering process. But for people to know, like, and trust you, they first need to know about you, right? They need to find out about you. So we want to get as many people in as we can here, and then here is where we start to filter out, and we start to sift through the different levels. Now, one of the things I want to talk about just before we end this, and I'm going to just quickly move you across here so I can show you the screen. So just bear with me a second while we do this. Hopefully, you can see that all right. And at the same time, in fact, what I'm going to do, just bear with me a second, I'm actually going to pick this up and move it around. So, this is going to be interesting. Hold on. And then I need to flip the camera so it's not all backwards. Hey. Right, so, let me just move this stuff around. Bear with me one second. Okay, so I'm going to load my screen up. Now, the reason I want to show you this, and it's important that I show you this, is because I have here what's called a deals process. So this is Active Campaign. This is what I'm using at the moment, okay? Now, as you can see, if I come down to one of my pipelines, because I've got all these different pipelines, so different opt-ins where people get opted in and I talk to them, and one of them are, for example, this is um, my workbook. So when people are going through my workbook, I can see, look, where everybody is at every step when they're going through my workbook. I can see. And so I get to watch people as they go through this process. And this thing's huge, look. There's so much information on here. Now, the idea behind me doing that is because I'm just going to load up a contact. Bear with me a second. I'm only moving you away because I want to be respectful. I don't want to share any, uh, any data with you that's like client information. So you can just look at that crazy drawing for a minute. Uh, I'm going to load up my profile. Okay, so now we're looking at my profile, right? So this tells you who I am, and this is all the information that I've gathered about this person. Now, at the moment, obviously, there's not a lot of stuff in here. Now, we can add new fields, but look, this is what I love about this, is I can see everything that I've done at this point with this, client, with this contact. So I can start watching this information. I can start seeing where they've checked in, what they've done. Um, to be honest, that's probably not a good one. Let me see if I can find. I've got different accounts. But the reason I'm showing you this is because this is the whole purpose of what it is that you want to do. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Let's get my address out of the way. So look, I can see what hosting provider I'm on, when the domain was registered, like because this is all information I can like I collect. These were the tags that I've got associated to this account. So I can start to see the journey that this person's gone on. Look. I can start to see where they are. I can click on the deals, I can see what deals I've got going on at the moment. So I can see that during the workbook progress they're actually on images at the moment. Um, and I can see where they are and what they're doing and how it's going. And so the reason I share this with you. The reason, the reason I'm really sharing this with you is because once you understand this information, once you see this and you start to get a visual representation of, okay, so this is what's happening, this is how it's happening, then you can start to nurture, you can engage, you can start to communicate. Having an opt-in is great, but the whole, life, the whole purpose of having an opt-in is to gather the information so you can then communicate. You need to be able to communicate with your audience, and that's the most important thing. And it's what people tend to forget. They'll set up an opt-in, and they'll set up a sales funnel, and they'll set up a process to buy stuff, but they don't actually look after the clients and the customers. And so it's really important that you understand why you're doing what you're doing. And so the best way you can do that is asking the question, what's next? Because when you ask the question, what's next? Okay, they've opted in. What's next? Right, now I need to get them to know, like, and trust me. Brilliant. What's next? Now I want them to buy something so I know they're going to become a customer. Great. What's next? Now I need to look at the next problem. Okay, so we've solved the little problem. What's a bigger problem? Right, let's solve that. Okay, what's next? Well, now we've solved that problem. That's going to create a new problem. So now we need to solve that. What's next? And so we could take them through the process of what's next? What's next? What's next? You know, it could be that somebody wants to lose weight. So they come to you and say, I want to lose weight. And you say, okay, right. Well, the first we need to do is we need to work out where are you right now? Okay, because we can't figure out where you're going to be if we don't know where you are. So the first we need to do is find out where you are now. Understand that. Great. What's next? Well, then we need to put a plan in place. We know, then we need to know the outcome. Where do you want to be? Great. What's next? Well, now we need to put a plan in place so you can get them to become a customer to put a plan in place. Great. So now they've lost some weight, but they're going to hit a plateau because we know that everyone hits a plateau after a certain amount of training. So what's next? Well, then we need to readjust 
Excellent. And then we've readjusted. They've lost the weight. Now they're going to have new goals. They're going to have this new sense of passion and purpose. They're going to be motivated. They're probably going to want to go out and find similar like-minded people. Great. So we can introduce them to clubs and events and what's next. Do you see what I mean? You start building up this process. And like you can start to create new products and new services and new things that can help people. And so that's just one industry. But when you look at this from an opt-in perspective, an opt-in is just simply a way to get someone to say they want to find out more information about you. And the reality is, and I'm going to put you back over here for a minute now, because uh, what I sort of talk to you about this a little bit more. When we're looking here at this process and you're saying, give me your name, give me your email address. Uh, and let me, and, and opt in. No one really wants to do that for a newsletter anymore. What would be much better is if you have a section on your website that says, "Here's something I'm going to give you, and in return, I want your name and your email address." Okay. So when you're saying this to subscribe, like give me your name and email address to subscribe, the reality is that most people don't want to join an email list. Most people do not want this anymore. This just It's not that effective. If you're going to use it, put it at the bottom of your blog post. And then people that want to find out more can. People will subscribe to you on YouTube. People will subscribe to you and follow you on Facebook. But no one really, really wants to subscribe to an email list anymore. Like the numbers, the fact that it's, it's proven now, they're just, it's just not as effective. So what you need to look at is different things. So here's the thing where you can offer something, offer one problem, one solution, and get them to put in their name and email address to get that. Now, what you need to make sure you do, if you're going to offer that, is that as soon as they opt in, the very next screen should give them what they asked for. So you need to deliver whatever that is. So if you're saying you're going to give them something, give them it. Don't send them to a one-time offer or an upsell or something where you can get more money. Like That's not what they asked for. If I ask for something and you're saying, wait, before you go, get this instead, like, internet marketers use that tactic, but the reality is, you're not building trust. All you're interested in here, if this is a one-time offer to increase conversions, all you're interested in here is making money. And if you're interested in making money, you'll make some, but the reality is that it won't be sustainable. And people are not going to have that level of rapport, that level of trust with you, whereas if they want something, you deliver it. You give them what they want. So the first thing you need to do is give them what they want. Now, what I tend to do is slightly different. I will have a video here and I won't ask for a name or an email address. And I will send them to another video. So this first video, sorry, this is a really bad drawing. This first video will literally just be value. I am going to give you value. I do not expect anything in return. I do not want your name or your email address. This could be a Facebook ad. Um, this could just be a YouTube video. This could be a Facebook Live, like a midday mastery session. It could be anything. right? So I'm going to add value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you that here's a problem. And I'm going to make you aware of the problem. The first thing you need to do is awareness. So when somebody becomes aware of a problem, the next thing I do is I offer a solution. Now, most people will put in an opt-in here and say, I want your name and email address before I give you the solution. I like to do it a different way. And I'm not saying this is right, but this is just what I'm doing at the moment. And it works for me and it works for my clients. So what I like to do is this is the problem. Here's your awareness. Now we've raised your awareness. Here's the solution. Sorry, this is really bad writing on here. So here's the awareness, here's the solution. Now, if you would like a worksheet or further information or if you would like anything else around this, so if you would like to get the solution quicker or if you would like to, whatever it may be, um, like this could be, here's a solution, here's a worksheet to go with that solution. Here's a solution, here's a mini course uh, for free that you can get access to um, to take this to the next level or here's a way to get it that much quicker but I want your name and email. Because what I've basically said here is, look, I'm making you aware of something. Here's a problem. This is a problem that you need to be aware of. And I know what the solution is. I can help you. Here's a solution. Right. Now you know the problem and the solution. I'm going to take you to the next level. Like what's next? I'm going to give you a worksheet or I'm going to give you a couple of more videos or I'm going to I'm going to take this further. So this is basic answer, detailed answer. But for the detailed answer, now what I want is a commitment from you. So look, I was willing to give you this to add value. I was willing to show you that I know what I'm talking about. But now if you want to go any further, I want a commitment from you. I want your name and email. And then what you do is you deliver this. And on the back end of this, what you can do is send them out a series of emails that are relevant to this. So, hey, I know we talked about this one thing and 
I hope you sorted this out. And I just want to check in. Have you figured this out? Have you got it? Great. Oh, and by the way, here's the next step. I'll just move my cup of tea out of the way. Now, if you want to go even further with this, here is my crazy offer for seven pounds just so that you can take this to the next level. Now, I'm going to give you an example of what I do here and how I do this in my business. I have Facebook ads that talk about some of the biggest problems that people have in business, traffic and conversion. Okay, and for traffic, the reason that people are struggling to attract the right customers is because they don't know who their right customer is. So that's a problem. So then what I do is I offer them the opportunity to learn about the customer avatar. And I talk to them about the things they need to do to create a customer avatar. Now, if they want, they can email and download a worksheet, which is an infographic that talks them through step by step what they need to do to create a customer avatar. At the same time, what I also do is I offer them some information that will help them, that will take them to the next level. So... I even do a webinar here, and there is a small little webinar, it's not a big one, it's a little webinar where I talk about the customer avatar, and I go through this whole process, and at the end of this, I sell people into a small little course, it's a little £17 course, and what that does is that takes them through step by step, so I've got their name and email address, I've got a webinar where I, talk, I, I do an example, and I'm like, look, now you've got everything you need to create your customer avatar, but if you would like a step by step video series talking you through how to do it, then you buy it. And then I do a bonus training at the end of the webinar, which, uh, which at the end of, I do a bonus at the end of the training, which is an additional webinar, which takes them into the next level, which is, oh, by the way, now that you know who your target audience is, now you need to make sure that you're converting them when they come to your website. So now we're going to look at the conversions, which is basically what I'm talking to you about now. So that's my process and what I go through. And the idea is that you can get people to opt in in a different way. People can opt into a webinar. That's an opt-in. People can opt-in by downloading a free product. That's an opt-in. People can opt-in because you're giving them the answer to a solution. People might, you might even want to give some value out before they opt-in. Like, for example, with my book, I give the first chapter away for free, and then people can opt-in if they want to find out more. Or they can go and buy the book. So there's different things you can do. Now, I'm not saying that there's a right or a wrong way to do anything. You need to test it. You need to find out what works for you. And you need to do that for you, all right? There's no point doing anything um, just because someone else is doing it. Like if someone says, oh, I've got a really good idea, then great. Test it for yourself. Make sure it works for you. And if it works, then adjust it. Tweak it. Do what you need to do. But the, the, the starting point has to be getting it out there. You have to have an opt-in that you can test. You can't test something if it doesn't exist. So I would say to start with, have one opt-in. Work on one process, create one funnel, sit down and say, right, what's next, what's next, what's next? What's the outcome? What do I want to deliver? For me, it's my six-week course. So I look at the outcome and I'm like, I want to work with clients one-on-one -on -one for six weeks. Great. Okay. So now let's reverse engineer that. Rather than what's next, what's before? What's before? What's before? And I reverse engineer that all the way back to they found out about me. Great, so they found out about me, what's next? Right, they need to understand this. Right, what's next? They need to understand that. What's next? They need to do this, they need to do this, step by step, until I get them to the point when they're ready to work with me. Does that make sense? So the whole reason I'm giving you this is because an opt-in, the only purpose of an opt-in is to gather that information, is to create that contact card so you can start talking to people. And the whole thing that you want to understand about having a database is it's not the number of people you have in your database, it's the quality. I spend just as much time getting people out of my database as I do trying to get them into it. So you really need to understand that the people that you're working with are the people that want to work with you. You shouldn't be there trying to convince people. All right? There's no need. You don't need to convince people that they need to buy from you. That's not what we're here to do. If you have a product or a service and you know it's good and you know it's valuable, then that's fantastic. All right? Be confident in the fact that you're good at what you do, that you know what you're doing, and be confident in the fact that the right people will come to you. And you just work on delivering the content, delivering the value, doing the right thing, and know that the that if you're good, because look, if I, I'm, I need to just like be honest here, if your products are rubbish, like if the marketplace doesn't want what you're offering, then it's irrelevant. Building an opt-in for something that no one wants to buy is pointless. So you need to like, there's a step back, and this is why we talked about last week, you need to understand your business. You need to understand your market. You need to understand the customer avatar. You need to know all of these things first. Because you need to test that because there's no point building this out if no one's going to go through it. Right? If you put people through this process and you right, I'm going to build an opt-in, I'm going to build a sales funnel, I'm going to build all of this stuff, I'm going to build out all of these processes. Oh, and then no one's giving me any money at the end of it. Oh, by the way, that's where I was last year. I built all of these amazing things. 
And the reality of it is, is that I wasn't selling through it. I, 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 I just, I did it wrong. And I know now, as a result of doing that, like looking back and it's in hindsight, I can say, Do you know, it's so obvious. Get people to opt in. Get them to know, like, and trust you. Get them to purchase from you so they become a customer. That's the whole purpose of what we're doing this week. We're talking through this. But from an opt-in perspective, just getting them to opt-in, there's different ways to do it. You can get people to um, sign up for a free discovery call. There's a way for them to opt in there. You can get people to um, register for a membership area. So you can say, I'm going to give you free videos. Um, just create an account. Creating an account is, is a form of them opting in. They're signing up for you. So they're interested in finding out more information. So you can get them to give their name and email address or a username and password. Because by someone, it's a value transition, right? People will give you your na their name and email if they're getting something in return. So what you want to do is you want to add value, add value, add value. So people, they, they, they're, they're confident. You've got over that initial barrier where people are like, oh, I don't really want, I don't know this person. I don't really want to give them my details. If you can get over that initial barrier, if you can get over that initial, that point where you're, you know, you're basically, you're just sort of starting out. Because at the start, people, no, no, one, no one knows you at the start, right? So you've got to imagine that you need to, you need to build that relationship up before you ask for a name and email address. And so if you want to like reduce the chances of someone like not being interested in you, if you want to reduce the chance of someone saying, I'm not giving you that, like if you want to take away those barriers, then you need to add value. You need to add value and they need to see that value because once they've seen that value that you offer, they'll be more likely to give you their name and email address. And then once you add more value, they'll be more likely to give you money. Like there's more than enough money out there. People want to buy stuff. It's just they probably don't want to buy what you're selling if they don't know, like and trust you. So the whole purpose of the opt-in is to get them to know, like, and trust you so that they can purchase and become a customer. All right? you don't, there's no point having someone in a database if they're just going to sit there. Because after 12 months, what will happen is you'll send out an email and they'll go, who the hell's that? Spam. Unsubscribe. And that's going to affect your deliverability rate. Because when you send out emails, the, the companies that send out the emails, MailChimp, Infusionsoft, um, or, or Active Campaign, they monitor... How many people interact with you? They monitor how many people open your email. They monitor how many people unsubscribe. They monitor how many people complain. And so you get a score. And depending on how good you are with your emails and your interactions, depends on how high your score is. Higher the score, more your emails will get out. Lower score, they'll start to throttle you. It's how it works. It's one of the biggest challenges that internet marketers have is email deliverability. It's why they're looking at other options. So you need to understand that Getting people to opt into a list and then nurturing that list, using that list effectively, making sure that you're not just spamming, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It's not about that. You're, you're, you're nurturing them. You're building them up. You're like, do you know what? This is, a, this is a potential customer. This is somebody who is willing to give me some money because they trust me. So what I need to do is I need to honor and respect that and I need to be able to deliver them exactly what it is that they need. Not necessarily what it is they want, what they need because if I look after this customer at the moment now this may be a small customer this may only be like a seven pound customer and oh seven pound that's nothing so what but if I look after them if they spend or invest seven pounds with me and then I look after them and I water them and I nurture them and I give them some food and they grow and they grow and all of a sudden they've got a little bit more money and they're a little bit more confident and they believe in me a little bit more and they give me a little bit more money and now they're buying into a £17 product and now they're buying into a £97 product and now all of a sudden they're a fucking great oak tree and they're giving me £10,000 so I can work with them because I've taken them through that process. Too many people are out there saying, oh, I need these big customers, I need these big clients, oh, I'm just going to try and grab whatever I can. And but the reality is that the raving fans, like to build a raving fan, to have someone who loves you, like look at Rep, for example. I'm going to use you an example. Rep, how long have we been talking? How long have we been communicating? How much value have I added to your life? How much have I given you? Because it's things like that. When you look at, when you look at Rep, he's on my Facebook Lives every day. You know, and he's in South Korea, apart from now, he looks like he's probably left. But when you, <laughs> no, look, he's on there, there he is, buddy. Long time. And I've just been giving and giving and giving and giving. And so, like, I know that Rhett's got an amazing business. And I know that when he has a problem, he comes to me and he asks me and I help him. And I know that having him as a customer is very valuable. And I love him because of it. He's a great guy. And so we have a great relationship. Even though we've never met each other, we have that relationship because we've built that. 
And look, now he's actually doing stuff. He's implemented a sidebar. See, I'm giving him a little bit of information to make his site better. As a result of doing that, he's starting, post a link. Post a link, let everyone see what you're doing. You see, Rhett's got such amazing content. He's got phenomenal content, but he needs to structure it in a better way. So we've been working with him and we're starting to go through this process now. But this is just an example. I'm giving you guys an example so that you can see this because when you take someone like Rhett and when you nurture him and when I help him and get him to a point where he's like, yeah, I'm ready. That's hard work, but that, do you know what, is worth it. Because now what happens, and I know this because he's done it, is Rhett's like, hey guys, you need to check out Steve, you need to look at Steve. He's doing all my marketing for me, he's bringing people in for me. And that word of mouth, that referral from Rhett to his friends to come and find out about me, they already know, like, and trust me, even though they've never heard of me, because I was recommended by a friend that they trust. See, that's the main thing you need to understand is that you can spend a lot of money on marketing and advertising and trying to get people into your funnel to buy from you, trying to get people to opt in, and you should do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But you should understand why you're doing it. The whole reason you're doing what you're doing ultimately is to nurture people, to put them through a process. Boom, look, Dylan, look, Rhett put me onto you. So Dylan, I know you've been watching me for a little while now, brother, and like this is and we've been talking and this is exactly what I'm talking about. The whole reason I'm like I'm showing you this live. Like this works when you add value, when you constantly help people, because you can, the money will come. People will, people will become your customers and because they, they can see the value. Like the whole purpose of an opt-in isn't just to squeeze money out of people. The whole purpose of an opt-in is it's the opportunity to build a relationship. I mean, he's a bit delusional to be fair, Dylan. He says I'm a legend. I won't go that far, but I'd like to think I add value. I would like to think I add value, and I'd like to think I do that for a lot of other people, like Gal and other people I've seen on the call. Thanks for all being here, by the way. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and this is it. You never know. You never know where that next customer is going to be. And I'm going to give an example just really quickly before I leave. So I was on stage at the end of last year with um, uh, a guy called Caleb Maddox. So I call him a guy because a lot of people call him a kid. He was 14 at the time. He's 15 years old now, makes 100 grand a year. Fantastic kid, got a hold of sales funnel stuff knocked down. You know, he's got like Russell Brunson, Grant Cardone, all of these people like backing him and behind him. He's got an amazing dad. Um, and he's taught me a lot as well. Now, bear in mind, he's a 14 year old kid and he's taught me a lot. Um, but my point is that when he, when he was on stage and when he was talking, he shared a story and it was really powerful. He said that when he gets on a Facebook Live, when he, when he delivers his content, when he does his thing, he plays full out. He gives it everything he's got. And when he started doing it, he had like, I think his first like, I don't know if it was Facebook Live or whatever it was he was doing, he had like four viewers. And it dwindled down and there was just one person. And so he's delivering this Facebook Live and he's sitting there feeling all bad, going, oh my God, I've got no one here. There's like, there's no, there's, there's no one listening. I've got like one person. And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm considering just ending the call because there was just one person watching. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about an opt-in. Like, this is before the opt-in. So this is before they opt-in. This is just like the awareness. This is the stage where people just get to know about you, where you drive them into the opt-in. So there was this one person on the call, and he decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to give great value. I'm going to go full out. And so he played full out. He gave everything he had. And it turns out that the person who was on the call, who reached out to him, was actually, I think it was Grant Cardone's wife or sister. I think it was his sister. So Grant Cardone's sister and said, I'm going to put you in touch with Grant Cardone. He needs to speak to you. And what happened is that Grant found out about Caleb. And as a result of that, Grant, I think, tweeted or messaged. And Caleb just went boom. And it exploded overnight. And he was getting hundreds and thousands. I mean, I watched one of his videos, like literally a couple of days ago, 5.3 million views. I got over 5 million views on one of his YouTube videos. The kids, I say kid, the guy has exploded. All right? He's doing really, really well now. But that wasn't because he was like, oh, I need to bring as many people in as I can. I need to bring it. He just focused on doing what he does best. He focused on giving value. He focused on nurturing the people who were there. Even if it's just one person. If you've got one person in your opt-in list, nurture them. Look after them. Take them through the process. All right, you can work to do other things to bring more people in and you can tweak and adjust that. But it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. Start by bringing a lot of people in filtering them through, getting them to a place where they know, like, and trust you, that is what the purpose and the outcome of an opt-in should be. And you're not going to get that by having sign up to my newsletter on your homepage straight under your title bar. No one's going to do that. You need to add the value first. You need to give the value before you can get the email address. So just today, have a look through your own website. Have a look through what you've got. Have a look through what you're already doing 
and ask yourself the question, how can I improve this for my audience? What can I do differently to add value so that people will want to give me their name and email address? Rather than just asking for it, like give me your name and email address because if you don't give me that, I'm not giving you this. How can you say, do you know what? I'm going to give you some value so that you know they're happy. So they're sitting there going, yep, yep, this is good. This is good. Okay, what's next? And then make sure that you have that next step in place. And we'll continue this tomorrow when we talk about the initial product offer. But for now, I really want you just to look at your opt-ins. Understand and get to know your opt-ins so that you can figure that out, so you can drill down into that. Really, you, you do need to build a database. All right, and you can, as I said, there's lots of different options, but the list is always going to be your most powerful asset. But it's got to be a quality list. It's got to be a good list. This week, I will make a landing page for my website. That is my next step. So, excellent. The idea of a landing page is obviously to get them to take action. Now, there are two types of landing pages. You have a squeeze page and you have a sales page. That's it. Two types of landing pages. I mean, there's no point, like, there's no point just having an information page. You need them to get to do something. Again, what's next? So when you look at this, when you look at the squeeze page, what's next is I want your name and email address. Okay, what am I going to put in place on that landing page to get their name and email? The other is a sales page. I want to get them to click through to the next screen, either to purchase or to do something. So there should always be what's next. Now remember, if you're going to create a landing page, rep, one thing I'll say to you is that that landing page should have one outcome. Don't ask for their name and email address and tell them a product and give them some information about this and tell them about what you're doing next week. And, do, and, and it's too much. One landing page has one outcome. That's it. To focus on one thing. One problem, one solution, one outcome. What's next? That's it. Simplify the entire process so it takes away all the overwhelm, so it takes away all the frustration, so it takes away all the worry. One outcome. So I hope that's helped today. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if anyone you need to know, uh, or if there's anyone that needs to know about this, please tag them, uh, put their name below. Uh, I've been meeting some amazing new people and some people I have no idea who they are or even where they're coming from. So if you tag with a name and I introduce and I meet someone, then at least I know they've come from you and I can you know, say thank you for that. So please reach out. If there's anything you need, let me know. Anything you're doing with opt-ins. And underneath, what I'd like you to do in the video is type in the URL to your opt-in. If you've got an opt-in at the moment on your website, and I'm going to do the same, I'll tag mine below. Um, mine's a questionnaire. I have a very simple questionnaire. But what I'd really like you to do right now is to uh, put a link below with your opt-in. Because I'm going to opt-in to everyone's process. I want to see it. I want to go through it. I want to have a look and see what you've got going on. And also give other people the opportunity to as well. So have an amazing day. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll be talking about the initial product offer, talking about landing pages and sales pages. So if you need to know about that, come back. We'll be talking about how we can get people to go through to the next stage in the customer journey. Um, but hopefully today that's helped. I've gone through some important stuff here. I'll put this up on YouTube later. And I'll speak to you again tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Guys, have an amazing day. Thank you so much for your time. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.